Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Tahir Dinsa. You are watching SDTV. Last one or two year has totally changed the world, and it's and it's already brought new entities struggling. And the change is at the tectonic level. Earlier, after the World War, Second World War, uh, if about uh, bulk of the GDP was US alone, and the war ravaged Europe was built through the Marshall Plan, and they had the money, and we have a system, Britain word system and all. The world was divided into the Cold War. Then US was the sole superpower. And the reason was primarily this oil bonanza. The oil would be sold in dollars. There were other reasons internally in, in the dollars through the OPEC. So the dollar is the only currency which if you print more, then that doesn't cause inflation. US is the only country. They can have monetary expansion and avoid inflation because... Now that is changing on. The renewable energy is going to, the, this energy is shifting. Then the Ukraine war. Now the energy prices has destabilized the global system. IMF says in the latest meeting, IMF and the World Bank Group, that about $4 trillion less would be produced in the next four years in the greater West, which is Europe and the US. And that because of this, Germany is in recession. This year, the German GDP growth would be 0.5 negative. Italy has announced recession and uh, the US is close to the brink of recession. And three Gulf states, Qatar, UAE, United Arab Emirates and the Saudi Arab will earn $3.5 trillion more because of the energy prices and the greater uh, I mean OPEC run by Russia and the China is gaining momentum. So there is a bipolar, multipolar world. Pakistan has its interest in all these countries. Now the expert says that in 2023 it will become impossible not to join a group. You have to join a Greater West or the Eurasia which is Russia or China or at the middle course, if you can adopt the middle course, some of the critics and the experts say that already this internal problem political is because Pakistan seems to be inclined towards the greater West or the other parties. What is the situation and how the Pakistan is going to grapple with all this or gonna take this situation? We have a pinch of salt in all those policies and the directive. And who is going to take this policy we have today with us? Uh, an expert with us who has served as an ambassador. He has seen the military corridors from a very close quarter. And uh, he's a PhD doctor as well. He has been, I mean, he knows the discipline as well. Major General Ambassador Raza Mohammed, very warm welcome. Thank you so much. Jansa, what do you say briefly on this premise? I think, you first of all, if we uh, look from inwards, outwards, uh, when you were talking of the situation in Pakistan, the major problems which Pakistan encounters now are two. Number one, and the foremost, is economic instability or a recession, I would say. We have gone into serious recession. Number two is the internal political polarization. And this political polarization is compounded by our internal security issues. Uh, we had comparatively quiet uh, borders with Afghanistan. And we have a very quiet border with uh, India now. But suddenly the terrorism has resurged. And in this whole process, the main uh, attacks are going on the security institutions, the installations, and before that, the Chinese or the foreigners were the target. Now, when we combine all these things, we understand that Pakistan has to look inwards first and then go outwards. Uh, outwardly, you are very right. This, uh, this is the time when all the world is uh, dominated by the global competition. And the competition basically that ensues now is between China and United States. 
China took advantage of the globalization. China took the advantage of uh, market economy. And lastly, post 9-11, when America was busy fighting wars, spending trillions in the world, in that vacuum, China very quietly used the vehicle of economy to make inroads in Asia, Eurasia, uh, uh, in Middle East, in uh, Africa, and perhaps in Latin America as well. So it was realized during Biden's time more significantly and before that even during President uh, Obama and um, Trump's time. Especially from President Trump's time onward, it was realized that China is perhaps becoming a challenger to the hegemony of America over the world. And it is now in the national security strategy of the Biden administration, which was issued last year, that China has been very squarely uh, put or termed an enemy or a challenger. And they have not minced words that they will do everything to uh, scuttle the Chinese rice. The second challenge which has come up in this global competition, which has basically complicated or exacerbated uh, the um, whole issue, is the Russian uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine or Russian special operations of Ukraine. So American attention is presently towards two things. Number one, uh, how to stop China from rising and push it back. Number two, how to resolve the issue in the Europe. But the European issue, as uh, I was discussing with you, the Ukraine war has given few default advantages to uh, West as well. Uh, NATO is rejuvenated. Now we see that uh, EU is also actually firming up internally. Uh, Brexit may be reconsidered perhaps because uh, UK is facing economic problems. Last but not the least, uh, directly and indirectly, the military industrial complex of United States and Russia uh, uh, and uh, other world has uh, gained. Uh, another important point I think we foresee, uh, we, we can see in the uh, war is that Russia and China perhaps were coming closer to each other. Now China will be rethinking because China is a very, very different uh, uh, nation. It is a civilization state. They think very deeply. They are quiet. They are patient. And they are not in hurry to attain the things they can wait for these years. So in this whole um, scenario, you were very right that uh, there is a call, visible or invisible call, from the West to stay away from China and join them in their efforts against China or as, as a minimum. Do you think we have already joined the West? No, I don't no. think so. I don't think so because uh, joining... Who will, uh, I mean, call the shot? Who will take this decision? Who will take this decision? I think it will be a collective decision by the government of Pakistan. But I can give you one example. For example, when you see uh, our national security policy, new national security policy, our new national security policy has shifted our focus or calls for shifting our focus from geostrategy or the state security to human security. Now, human security will come through the economic development, through trade, through connectivity. And for that, the presently available vehicle is only the sea, which is the main foreign direct investment with you. West is not investing in your country. No one, no country is investing even $500 million. But to talk of $62 billion, out of which I think about half amount has been invested by the Chinese already. So when you see this thing, your and Chinese interest intertwine together. And it is not only Chinese interest, it is whole Belt and Road Initiative and within that the Eurasia. So when we see this thing, then we can safely say any government which comes here, whether it is this government, whether it was the past government, will be the future government for, for, for past 70, 75 years, we have been supported very closely, economically, diplomatically, military, militarily by China. And more importantly, China has never uh, kind of uh, laid any restrictions on you. There are no 
कंडीशनैलिटीज देर इज नो ब्लैक मेल फ्राम चाइनीज है सो उस लिहाज से फ्राम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ सॉरी फ्राम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इफ यू से वी हैव शिफ्टेड टूवर्ड्स वेस्ट आई वुड से नो आर वी थिंकिंग वी हैव बीन थिंकिंग ऑल ए लॉन्ग एंड फॉर सेवेंटी फाइव सेवेंटी टू ईयर्स वी बैलेंसड दिस रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन वेस्ट एंड चाइना इट्स पॉसिबल दैट कंटिन्यू दिस बैलेंस or adopt some middle course and i'm saying because of a purpose because cpec was that when the japan was developed they doled out manufacturing okay. of sony tvs and other okay. stuff okay. china want to outsource manufacturing of small hand freeze and cell phone and all they don't want them they're going big and they wanted to shift it here but for that we needed three things road infrastructure electronic and this uh, cable cable energy. and energy mm-hmm. in the first phase they invested and they solved these key problems mm-hmm. the second phase never happened who scuttled it yes good i think no one scuttled it number one number two we went into uh, these uh, uh, we went into kind of slowing of the cpec because of two three things number one the covid came because of the covid restriction china was very conscious china is still very conscious of the covid so the inflow of the things of the people of the machinery uh, actually uh, kind of slowed down number 2 at our end perhaps we started rethinking certain things especially the ipps uh because we were having circular debt problem we thought that we have made very expensive contracts of the production of the electricity but more importantly the so to say if i say blame of slowing down or not progressing on the industrial side or relocation of the industry as you were asking comes to us because we had to develop the special economic zones right and we had initially started with 11 perhaps or more than 11 economic zones then 9 then, then ultimately we came to 5 perhaps and then we said said okay we are going to inaugurate 3 right so last year we inaugurated uh, last last year and last year rashi ke dhabi ji and ikbal faisla bad ilam ikbal uh, but even there nothing is there on ground actually any industrial zone as you were saying will need uh electricity they will need internet they will need road they will need water and they will need facilitation on ground single window facility yes on ground these things are not there so if anyone is to be blamed it is to it is the pakistan pakistan itself they our who's cutted it i think you political or that there was some i mean or american pressure you budged under that the government what was that I do not think that it was American pressure. I would again say it is our inter internal bureaucratic bureaucratic hurdles and systems. Uh, you very aptly said one window operation. It is very fashionable to say one window, but every time we say it is one window, when we open that window, it it uh, enters into thirty two revolving doors <laughs> everywhere. Yes, uh, there was one thing uh, which could have done it uh, effectively. It it if it had continued and it had been empowered, and that was the CPEC authority. Uh, I heard people say that after um, CPEC authority came into being, the Chinese and other investors were happy that they could go to one place and talk to many people, and were facilitated. But when this government came, they thought perhaps it was um, superfluous or not needed, and only pl- planning commission can do the whole job. Do you see? I mean, toward the fag end of this program, do you see? And uh, I mean, political consensus or internal stability in coming months yes, that may solve. And I'm saying it because of a very specific reason. Yes. Because now, once again, people of Pakistan, for good or bad, right or wrong, the reason whatever, they are on one side. and the establishment there i mean now there is a change of command in rawalpindi and all that but uh, situation is uh, we have seen that before and uh, you know that was a fatality once couple of decades back the similar situation that the people of pakistan at that time were on one side 
and the decision maker. So, uh, what do you think? There my, would my, be some my, amicable solution. Yes, yes. I am a little optimistic this time. Or more optimistic. I hope. I'm hopeful. Hopeful because of uh, two, three indications. Right. Uh, the one indication is that uh, uh, Imran Khan, who is emerged as a leader. one of very, very popular leaders in the country, has also given few statements in past uh, two weeks which indicate a reconsideration at his part of going into negotiation with the sitting government. The sitting government means the 13 parties coalition that is the PDM. Uh, the PDM or the government has been offering um, the opposition to come to the table and talk. Uh, they were not listening, to, uh, they were not actually responding positively. I now see some rethinking, some positivity from uh, Imran Khan's side. I see some positivity from some quarters in the government also. And I think in the best interest of the country, they should sit together, number one. Number two, uh, there is always a vacuum situation in which the, so to say, establishment or executive is induced, which includes, I think, I would say that uh, this establishment would not be only the army, it would be all the uh, government institutions, including bureaucracy and perhaps judiciary also. So they are induced in this vacuum. That vacuum can only be reduced or so to say um, made unavailable uh, by the union or cohesion within the political leaders, political elite, political leadership. I would, through your, this program, would request actually all the political leaders, all the political parties, for the sake of this country and the, for the sake of people of Pakistan, to sit together and sit together for long and resolve all the differences for the good of the country. Election is not a solution, you think? It is a solution. Why not? It should not be taken and whosoever comes in, the power should be handed over to him or her or something. It should be there because, because that is what this, that is what our constitution says. Then why should why should a leading party which is on the winning sheet should sort sit with those mm. who have, uh, don't enjoy the backing of the people of the Pakistan? Actually, and I'm saying it because of a purpose. Because they term it as an uh, NRO and they say already the decision has been made and now they are uh, forcing, I mean. Okay, good. Uh, I'm not a political expert, I would say, number one, this. I'm talking about the narrative. Yes, ma ma uh, I will, I'll try to answer this as, as much as possible, as much I know and as much um, I can say. Uh, as far as the constitution of Pakistan is concerned, we have decided since long that it will be a parliamentary democracy. Unless all the country and all the um, parliamentary houses all sit together and change this constitution from parliamentary to some other system, that is a different thing. So within the parliamentary democracy, the best way to seek the uh, um, opinion of people and form a government is the election. So when are those elections to be held that also will be decided only when they sit together. About uh, the narrative that uh, the and about the fact that um, uh, there is a person who is very uh, popular in the country and why should he sit. Actually these two things could be segregated if I'm not wrong. At this point in time, there is one thing that we only talk about holding of the elections. The other thing is that for elections, we sit together and first of all, resolve the issue of the country's economy, which, what is affecting the country, what is affecting country the most. As you were saying, overall, there is a global recession and within this recession, we are going through more of the problems. And recently, because of the climatic uh, catastrophe, all the problems like our health, like education, like poverty, uh, food security, everything has been hit. And I think there is some time in the nation's history when the elite or the political leadership has to give up on the personal uh, 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 ego and perhaps compromise for the sake of the country's 
that sit together and let's decide as yes. we did in the national action plan so should there be should there be any intermediary or would there be who is going to broker it okay. i mean should there be a, some mm-hmm. sort of a arrangement from you know yes good i think it uh, it this will all again depend upon our political leadership number 1 number 2 we always say that we should not involve establishment we should not uh, uh, let the establishment interfere in the politics if we say this at one time and the second uh, at the second breath hum unko we call them also come over and resolve this happens. issue i think this won't go together the best is that politicians sit together uh, and resolve their differences themselves baad mein phir muqadme kar le whatever they want to do but for the sake of the country for the people because common man i'm sorry to say uh we are lucky people right but there are people in this country who are suffering, are suffering, a suffering a lot a lot people devastated by the flood they are forgotten they are forgotten who they they are sitting in the open in this winter and they went through through the scorching heat of summer also last last question towards the is there any hope and what is the time frame if there is a hope then in time frame i think within a month or two we should be, be able right. we should be able to sit together however resolution of the problem is going to take long the going to imf is a compulsion now it is not a choice we have to complete the imf program and for that the sitting government does not need a consensus sitting government is there they can go and they can uh, uh, actually uh, complete the program first but the most important thing is that what will happen to the future of country and economy about uh, the block politics you said something and we could not complete the answer on the block pol- block politics i think it is a very good thing pakistan has stated officially that we will not join a block and we have been for past 72 years able to balance out relationship between west usa that's good and china we should continue with that china we cannot give up that is the only time tested friend which has helped you economically socially and militarily also and presently also they are your main stay right. so not compromising on that but west and usa has been our usa has been our ally we have worked together we have gone up gone down them. together we trade with them mm-hmm. they are not our enemy they are our friends they have been our friends and we should continue to have good relationship with west and good relationship with china as well as later on uh, we should not compromise on trade with russia even abhi uh, for example india india is the strategic partner of united states of america against chinese rise in this region region but have they compromised on their trade no their trade has gone 120% up with russia in oil and gas in this period after february last year so i think we should look inwards first internal stability is number 1 number 2 do not compromise on your own interest economic and political and diplomatic and carve out a balanced policy of relationship right. so thank you very much for giving us time so the bottom line is that we have to look inward the problem is internal and uh, it would be resolved internally once it is done then uh, some say that things would be all right in in coming future and the hope is that it would not be long within the next uh, quarter or so it would be all right with this we say goodbye mm-hmm.